Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Francesco Santini, I'm from Basel, and I'm going to talk to you about our work on dynamic imaging of the muscle in neuromuscular diseases. I have no financial uh, interest or relationship to disclose, and this presentation is released under a CC BY 4.0 license, so you can redistribute it if you like. MR imaging is widely used in neuromuscular diseases, uh, and uh, its application range from a number of qualitative and quantitative methods mostly focused on identifying fat fraction, edema, and other muscle characteristics. But is it the whole story? So the muscle is meant to function. So can you, for example, tell from this picture of a bike if this bicycle is a good bicycle? Well, it looks okay, but let's see when it actually moves so it does what it intends. Well, we see that there are some weak points here. So the point is that uh, if you want to evaluate something in the context of uh, uh, its function, you actually need to see while it's performing this function. So what we do is we use dynamic imaging and uh, uh, this is something that has been done before and we've been doing it for a few years. Uh, what we actually do is to use electrical muscle stimulation inside the scanner to induce a periodic movement. This is an example in the calf and we see how uh, electrical stimulation can induce this movement. And then we can use normal cardiac imaging acquisitions to actually perform the uh, acquisition of the data. In our case, the acquisition was a compressed sensing accelerated for d phase contrast uh, uh, acquisition and uh, we obtain a velocity field that had the coverage over the whole calf. From this uh, three-dimensional velocity field, we could calculate the displacement through simple integration. And then from the displacement, we could uh, extract the strain tensor, uh, which is uh, a sort of measure of the deformation of the muscle itself. The strain tensor was then diagonalized and the eigenvalues were extracted. In this following uh, presentation, we will focus on the first uh, uh, eigenvalue of the strain because it turned out to be the most interesting to analyze. As you can see, the strain has a, a behavior over time that has a relaxed, relaxed state initially, then it reaches a plateau and then finally goes back to this relaxed state. So we will analyze the value here at the plateau, which we will just simply call strain, and we will also analyze these uh, two rates in which the uh, plateau is reached and in which the relaxation state is reached again the plateau, and there will be called buildup rate and release rate. We applied this method on a population of 14 healthy controls and 10 patients with neuromuscular diseases. As you can see from this table, the neuromuscular diseases were a range of diseases with a couple of patients in each, uh, in each type. This is what the representation of the data sets of the strain look like after the acquisition in a patient and in a volunteer. In the volunteer, you can see that uh, in the soleus, there is a, an area with a very clear, stronger strain, which is normal for this kind of uh, neuromuscular stimulation. Whereas in the patient, uh, we couldn't identify any particular source of uh, strain. And in general, the values were lower and uh, uh, the um, stimulation was not as effective as in the volunteer. When we um, evaluate, however, the uh, values on the ROIs, uh, this is the combined calf, so the triceps sura, uh, composed of gastrocnemia and the soleus. Um, the strain uh, shows a trend towards a higher strain for volunteers, which is what we expected also from previous studies. And uh, the buildup rate is slightly higher in volunteers, whereas the release rate is uh, uh, mostly similar. By analyzing the separate uh, ROIs, uh, we see that the soleus is definitely the most interesting muscle with uh, a significant strain difference between patients and volunteers, and also a very remarked difference in the soleus build up rate although it's not significant uh, we expected with such a difference uh, uh, with a higher population we would uh, definitely have uh, a significant separation the release rate uh, on the other hand uh, does not show uh, interesting differences in our considered population 
So the quantitative myomarkers derived from dynamic imaging show that there is definitely a sensitivity to various neuromuscular diseases. And the build-up rate uh, in conjunction to the normal strain, which is uh, something that has been explored before, uh, really seems a promising biomarker. And its characteristic is really only properly measurable with neuromuscular stimulation, because uh, neuromuscular stimulation gives us a very precise timing on when the contraction starts and ends. I'd like to acknowledge my uh, collaborators and my colleagues, and thank you very much for your attention.